a tiny zoom lens, a sophisticated use of laser technology, both the result of advanced research, each a fantastic development in its own right. But how do their benefits become tangible to society? That's the challenge taken on by the Center for the Commercialization of Advanced Technology, or CCAT, a public-private consortium of academia, industry, and government. Supported by the U.S. Congress through funding from the Office of Naval Research, CCAT's mission is to bridge the gap that exists between the generators of technology, the Department of Defense, and the commercialization of technologies. From wireless communications, vehicle navigation systems, to the ubiquitous internet and even your digital camera, much of the technology that enhances our daily lives somehow benefited from advanced research projects rooted in national security. It is CCAT's mission to help advanced technologies become products for the future. What may lie ahead? And how does CCAT help? Yu Hua Lo of the University of California San Diego's Jacobs School of Engineering developed a technology that may transform our ability to image the world. With a technology license from the university, he helped create revision technology to bring this application to market. What you are looking at is the smallest zoom lens in the world. Typical zoom lens is about three times longer and about 20 to 30 times larger in volume. This zoom lens produces the same optical zoom effect as any conventional zoom lens you will find in your camera. We start this project about uh, four or five years ago after the unfortunate event of September 11. Right after the event, the Department of Defense of U.S. government announced a challenge. What they want is a very small yet powerful optical lenses to help them to see things from far away with 10x optical zoom capability. Uh, on top of that, the whole system has, has to be so light to be able to mount on any military platform. Namely, the whole system cannot be weighed more than 100 grams, and the size has to be as small as a finger. This is an incredibly uh, tough problem. When we look at the problem, and we look into all possible approaches, uh, it doesn't take us too long to realize that the best approaches we could uh, take is really from the vision from the animal eyes. For example, when we look at eagle's eye, we find that we have an almost ideal solution for telephoto view. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at a fish eye, and we have another ideal solution for wide angle view. So if we can combine these two eye structures in one, and we have a wide angle as well as a high resolution telephoto view. And that is exactly what we try to do when we design our lens. This is the only camera in the world that can give you a clear image for object at infinity and the clear view at object that is only a quarter of the size of your hair. Original idea from DAPA was to use for security cameras, surveillance cameras, uh, mounted on different type of military platforms. But these devices can probably find better, uh, more uh, applications in consumer electronics, such as cell phone cameras, cameras in PDAs, in your laptop or PCs. And this camera also has some very unique capabilities. The camera can also find applications in medical imaging, in laparoscopic surgery. When we realize how useful this device can be, our next challenge, how do we realize this potential to different type of applications, consumer applications, defense applications, medical applications, and so on. And this is actually beyond what uh, the domain of my knowledge. Uh, in the laboratory, our purpose is to prove the concept, understand the physics, and make prototypes. So I quickly realized the limit of capability on my own, and I need to seek additional resource and help and advice.
from outside. CCAT award, I was told, is basically open to people from industry as well. So if I eventually want to move the technology outside UCSD and start a company, I need to receive re uh, resource that help me to develop a prototype that I can show around to investors and start my company. Fortunately, I was awarded with the CCAT award uh, for $75,000. With the CCAT award, I was also uh, connected to a market study group. And this market study group provide me the report. What CCAT helped me to focus on is the cell phone business. That's a massive consumer market. If a fraction of that will use our lens to upgrade their camera with the autofocusing and optical zoom capability, that becomes a very sizable and attractive market for any business. With the $75,000 awarded by CCAT, I have the money to hire the consultants, hire all engineers, including mechanical engineers, programmers, software engineers, optical engineers. Collectively, we developed the first prototype. In retrospect, I think CCAT award, the $75,000, the market study, and the association with all the members in the CCAT uh, produce many values. When you have something concrete in front of people, it's worth more than a thousand words or even a hundred pictures because you show people and people can easily envision how the thing will work, how the thing will fit into ca camera foam, and perhaps more importantly, it gives you the credibility that you can do something with as little as $75,000. Without a doubt, there are many challenges we have to overcome. Some are technical, some are business, some are marketing, in order to succeed as a business. I personally feel very optimistic about the chance of success in this cell phone business. Customers will receive that. They are willing to try new product and new technology. That makes me feel optimistic. On the other hand, the game becomes very exciting and uh, interesting since we know that the board is on our court. At San Diego State University, a $75,000 grant and market study from CCAT assisted chemist Bill Tong, who has perfected an ultra-sensitive technique to use lasers as a chemical detector. This particular method that we're working on called laser wave mixing or nonlinear wave mixing spectroscopy has a lot of uh, unique advantages. In a typical laser wave mixing setup, uh, what we do is we send two laser beams into the sample and when you mix two laser beams and cross them at a small angle you create interference gratings and if there is a molecule or atom or some molecules present in that grating you significantly change the dynamics of that grating and the signal beam coming out of that grating uh, tells you a lot about that molecule. So, so this is a, a really sensitive grating and therefore uh, the overall detection scheme is really sensitive. Recently we published uh, a paper, uh, we reported sub parts per quadrillion, a fraction of a quadrillion. So the level of sensitivity we're talking about uh, is like picking one second out of 500 million years. And then uh, we have other things like uh, the fact that the signal is a coherent beam, that is like a laser beam. So you can detect 100% uh, of your signal into your detector. Now potential applications are very wide-ranging, anywhere from defense, security, pharmaceutical, biotech, uh, environmental applications, and on and on. So my research lab has been funded by a lot of funding agencies, including the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, the National Institute of General Medical Sciences, and 
quite a few different companies and corporations. Recently, CCAT has helped us uh, find useful contacts um, for a specific application, and they've helped us uh, uh, focus in on specific applications that we want to study. Uh, one of the potential applications might be uh, that we can mount these really portable units on robots and UAVs and you can fly over somewhere and detect chemicals or anything else you want to detect in real time and the signal sent back in real time. Compare that to a lot of other technology where you have to collect the sample and then bring it back to the lab and then analyze them using much bigger machines. So our goal is to design them so that they are portable enough uh, to be used in the field uh, to get real-time signal. The future of this particular laser technique uh, is very promising and uh, we're collecting really encouraging results um, every day for uh, a wide range of uh, applications from biomedical to security, defense, uh, to environmental applications. And we have a lot more projects uh, we want to study than we have manpower for right now, but uh, we are studying all kinds of uh, potential designs. CCAT not only supports the development of technology, it supports the development of a workforce capable of assisting new technologies by providing real-world training for students. Through a CCAT-supported internship, San Diego State University MBA student Vincent Crowley was afforded the opportunity to work amidst some of the most advanced research in the country. I work at Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center San Diego in Point Loma, which is the Navy's premier research and development lab for science and technology the main focus is an acronym called C4ISR, which is, stands for Command, Control, Communications, Computing, and Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance, which is a mouthful, but the focus is the largest part of our portfolio of technologies here is communications, which can be anything from antennas to digital encryption systems, all the way to low-end technologies, which is maybe just a unit that captures Navy SEAL boats quicker for units actually out there in the field and operations. And this enables our warfighters and our decision makers more accurate information to make the timely decisions that are critical. What makes SSC San Diego's lab unique is that it's positioned at the intersection of technology acquisition and the warfighter requirements and that is to say that we are first identifying needs, real world needs and requirements and then backfilling them with real world developed technologies through the acquisition process with the entire goal being to serve the warfighter in the end. My job here at SSC San Diego is technology transfer, which is the process of commercializing technologies that are developed for government use. Um, an example of this is what you see on the screen back here is a computer software program that is written for computer users to, to help make their work on a daily basis more efficient. Closely clustered objects on a screen are often hard to, to pick and you'll spend time clicking the mouse on several objects trying to get the one you want. This software enables you to see a pre-selected cursor or, or object on the screen at any given time. Now you can see that this is developed for government use, but you can imagine the uses that this would have in a commercial application for micro devices such as PDAs with very small screens and tightly clustered objects. And that is an example of a technology that's developed for government use but does have commercial applications. Another example of the kinds of technologies that Vincent works with originated here in SSC San Diego's Environmental Sciences Labs. CCAT provided over $150,000 of support for a variety of development activities, from building prototypes to market studies. Well, what we're doing here is um, we've developed a new toxicity sensor called the Quicklight 200. It uh, measures toxicity in water using bioluminescent plankton. As the organisms are exposed to toxins, their light output goes down. Uh, in the earlier days, we used to run fish tests, and they took anywhere from two weeks to three weeks to run 
basically having to condition the fish in the laboratory, feeding them, taking care of them, and then actually putting the fish into small beakers and adding the chemicals, and then watching the effects on the animals. The whole process took anywhere from two to three weeks, many man hours, not to, not to mention the overhead involved. And what we've developed here is the Quick Light 200, which actually measures light output from bioluminescent plankton. The plankton are very sensitive to contaminants. When they're exposed to the contaminants, their light output diminishes. And it's quite measurable. It's very interesting how we all got started. Uh, as an oceanographer, we were going to see a lot making measurements in different oceans, using much larger instrumentation, uh, monitoring the environment for bioluminescence for a lot of Navy needs. And from that, over 20 years of going to sea, we actually uh, started the precursor uh, of the quick light. We didn't even know it. Uh, and basically, we're measuring light output from plankton, just to, know, just to find out what plankton were luminescent. We then developed a, a bigger system over here, which was put out at Navy shipyards. The Navy was concerned about toxic effects coming out of their shipyards, and we actually trained people how to use that for environmental uh, regulations. From that device, the, the evolution continued into a very small system where we now have high school students using this at high schools uh, uh, across the country where they don't have to worry about counting plankton. All they have to do is put one of these cartridges in with a predetermined amount of plankton, add your sample, close the lid, and start the program. When, when the user receives the quick light package, he will be getting the quick light unit and also uh, sample cartridges with a pre-measured dose of plankton. The user then dopes up the cartridges, puts it within the quick light, which is the automatic tester, closes the lid, and basically starts the run just by clicking into the software. The machine basically takes over from there, calibrates the system, and goes through each one of the cartridges measuring bioluminescence and fluorescence. The numbers come out automatically. They're, they're calculated by the software, so the user doesn't have to get involved in any of these calculations. Some of the advantages of the system are it's so small. Uh, it's very portable. You can take it out to the field. The other thing is you can, you can switch species that you feel are more appropriate for the site, such as metal-sensitive species or organic-sensitive species. The other thing is that you can have the results within a fairly quick period of time, within minutes after you run the test, whereas it takes weeks uh, waiting for reports coming from contractors. Right now, the system is, uh, has already been commercialized. It's already been transferred from the Navy out to the private sector to a company called Assure Controls up in Carlsbad. They have now made the first prototype, or second prototype. And this is the actual commercial product that is now going out, and some of them have already been sold to uh, China, where they have huge environmental problems in their rivers. So the Chinese are very much on board with this. They're very eager with this. And then we also uh, have uh, parties within the United States uh, that are interested in using this for freshwater um, uh, assays. Quick Light, well on its way to market, is just one of many technologies in the diverse SSE portfolio that Vincent works with. The majority of my time is spent uh, managing the entire portfolio. We have over 280 active patented technologies here, and uh, therefore my priority is effectively marketing the entire portfolio as, as best I can. So as a natural progression uh, of a student and as a former Marine, this internship has provided me the opportunity to stay connected with the government and public service, as well as to apply what I was learning in the classroom in, to real world applications and problems. The most important development that I think I've gained from this internship is the overall management of the program. Although I enjoy working on individual technologies and sciences on a daily basis, uh, putting all the pieces together and managing the, the big picture is, is what I enjoy the most, as well as what has given me the most valuable experience. This internship blew my expectations away. I had no business background joining the MBA program, and I, and I expected a much more rudimentary, um, lower level, well structured task internship and instead I was afforded this opportunity and was more of a marketing manager than I was an intern. 
this internship exposed me to a myriad of, of business functions, marketing, large organizations, technology, uh, finance and budgeting, um, as well as operations in general. And it, it gave me directions. As for goals, it sped up my goal timeline uh, immensely. Putting this experience on my resume has increased the number of, or, or the level of opportunities, both in number and responsibility, by quite a bit. At UCSD's Rady School of Management, a CCAT-sponsored internship allowed MBA candidates Cindy Atwell and Nicholas Boyle to create a plan to develop support for a promising new therapeutic technology. Nick and I worked with Lancel uh, working on a uh, adjuvant for vaccines. Um, an adjuvant is something that helps a vaccine work more quickly as well as more effectively. So for example, if you have one dose of a vaccine, uh, you can dilute that dose down um, tenfold and still have the same activity, the same e efficacy, and the same, it'll work just as quickly, actually more quickly, with the adjuvant. Lancel's technology is what's called a platform technology. So the platform technology you can use in many different areas. It's not just, um, just one product. You can make many products from this technology. Traditionally, we look at vaccines as something that you received as a child, maybe for chicken pox. But there are also uh, therapeutic vaccines, so Lancel's technology can work with both vaccines. So the, the U.S. is vulnerable to a dirty bomb terrorist attack. For example, a bomb blowing up over New York laced with influenza or smallpox. Currently, the existing technologies are not sufficient to deal with that infectious problem spreading across the U.S. The value of Lancel's technology promises to possibly, and there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, but possibly mitigate the spread of smallpox and influenza in the event of a terrorist attack. So Lancel's technology is at the preclinical stage, um, and it may well be in the preclinical stage for another couple of years. The importance of the CCAT grant, and indeed any grant that a small company like Lancel can get, is it enables the company to advance its preclinical studies. That's how the money was used that was received from, from CCAT. It's an extremely costly and risky phase of drug development, the preclinical phase. So it's so important for companies like Lancel to receive grants from CCAT and other research funding organizations to advance the technologies to a point at which venture capitalists and larger pharma players can uh, get actively involved from, in the funding. So the key challenge that we were faced with was coming up with a commercialization strategy for, for Lancel. The first step was doing a SWOT analysis of so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats and as well as doing a case study on 30 other companies in the, spa in the vaccine space which were similar to um, Lancel and determining how did they go about getting funding. For a startup company, funding is probably the number one concern <laughs> on the CEO's mind. A lot of the case studies that we work on are in the abstract sense and both Cindy and I like to apply what we learn in the classroom to real life applications and we were very fortunate in working with Lancel as well as well as Derry Connolly at CCAT and uh, Dwayne Roth and others at, at Connect in really seeing where the rubber meets the road in terms of, okay, here's the technology, but it's no use unless you appropriately commercialize it. So that's what's one of the, the key values of the work that Cindy and I did, and it advanced our professional learning. We actually talked with many people in the San Diego community, business community, who were very helpful in pointing us in the right direction and giving us advice on licensing and licensing terms. That's one of the more pleasurable aspects of this project was engaging with the community. And we have found many open doors. We would approach lawyers, other service providers, business leaders, commercialization leaders in San Diego, and they were all extremely willing to help us and guide our thinking to come up with recommendations for Lancel. The most surprising 
aspect of the project was just how difficult it is to commercialize a the technology. There is certainly no shortage of brilliant ideas coming out of the labs here at UCSD, at Burnham, Scripps. There are so many ideas. What is really challenging is how to commercialize those ideas and go from the lab to the market, which ties into the flagship educational program at the Rady School, which is the Lab to Market project. How do you transition brilliant technologies from the lab to the marketplace? And it's extremely challenging, and, and Lancel faces that challenge, and the working with CCAT is helping Lancel have a clearer vision towards product commercialization. I agree with Nick, because I always thought, you know, if it's a great technology, it's going to get out there somehow. But I, I think that really learning how, as an entrepreneur, learning how to package that, how to present that to potential investors is actually um, very, very important. And Cindy hit on a really key point, and both Cindy and I were scientists before coming to the Rady School of Management. And we fall in love with our projects and we think the technology will carry itself to the marketplace and that couldn't be further from the truth without the appropriate people and partners such as CCAT and Connect to provide a clearer path towards commercialization of technologies technology just doesn't go anywhere what lies ahead for CCAT to date CCAT has provided support for a multitude of various technologies, and the list of potential and current applications continues to grow. One thing is certain, that through CCAT, the dreams of the lab can one day become reality. <laughs>